talking with a couple of people on a thread in my previous video on knowing oneself. Now, that's a really interesting concept. And I don't think it's really as cut and dried as we think that it is. Um, it was famously uh, written on over the Temple of Apollo in Delphi, which was kind of the Mecca or the Rome of the ancient Greeks. And um, <coughs> beside it was made in Agan, which is nothing in excess, or always take the middle road. Now, Gnothise Oton, know thyself, that's the one that kind of fascinates me here. Um, what does it mean to know oneself? And on what level is such knowledge taking place? It seems tautological at first, because knowing something means a subject-object relationship. I know something. Me and the knowledge are not the same. Um, Nicolas de Silentio uh, has recently done a thing where he posited the idea of bits of knowledge, the tiny little essence of knowledge and what it means, some sort of, I guess, uh, binary or algorithm, uh, is the way he phrased it. And it's an interesting way to look at it, that there are reducible units of knowledge. But what I'm interested in, before we even go at that, is what is the idea of knowledge in and of itself. Where is knowledge stored? Where does knowledge exist? I think knowledge exists only in human consciousness. Now, in as much as we're talking about um, self-knowledge, again, we're looking at sort of the idea that subject and object are trying to, are somehow separate, whereas we know that me and myself are the same thing in a certain way. If, if myself is not me, what is it then? I guess, you know, the old ladders of the mind thing. There are certain levels on which we understand things and there are certain levels on which we evaluate ourselves. Um, but again, always the assumption is there's one thing evaluating another. Now, what do I think they meant when they said, know thyself? Um, supposedly, it was just a command from Apollo. We're obligated to do this. But Apollo was, of course, the god of wisdom and prophecy. And <clears throat> he's not just saying that this is a command. The assumption is that it's also kind of good for us to know ourselves. Now, what does that mean? Now, I guess the first thing is, is know fundamentally what you are. You are limited. There are things that we can't see. We know that they exist, but we can't see them. We can put things under a microscope to see them and sort of extend our senses, but we're not really getting an accurate view of them, or at least we're not seeing them the same way our senses would see them normally. So there are things that are out there that we can't see, but we know that, that are there. So we know that we are limited. We are not omniscient. We're not gods. That is isn't that is knowledge in and of itself. It's like Socrates, again, the Delphic Oracle is involved, where it was posited that he was the wisest among men because he knew that he knew nothing, whereas other men knew something and thought that they knew something when, in fact, they didn't. Know thyself could mean, and this is the way I interpret it, know that you're not a god, and also know what that implies if you know that you're not a god. It means that you're not omniscient. You're not in charge of this matrix. You're not the one who is pulling the levers here ultimately. At least in a big picture sense, there's stuff that is not in your control. That's necessity, right? How much is necessity? How much of what we deal with is necessity and how much is within our control? Um... The very fact that you make a distinction between what's in my control and what isn't in my control, as per, say, Epictetus, means that I am limited. There are things that are happening right in front of me that I have no control over. Therefore, I'm limited. Therefore, I'm not a god. Now, I'm not a god. What does that mean? Okay. If I'm going to evaluate myself, if I'm going to place value on myself, I have to place value on myself only as myself. I can't place value on myself for what I am not, because I can sort of say, okay, know thyself, know that I'm not a god, therefore can I judge myself for not being a god? It doesn't seem to make sense. I am not a god. Can I judge a rock for not being a 
Kite, or can I judge Apollo for not being Yahweh? Um, I don't know, can you judge something for being exactly what it is? We're not gods, therefore we can't be judged the same way as gods can. We can only use ourselves as any yardstick by which we can judge anything. This includes ourselves. We can't judge ourselves for not being gods, because it's simply our nature to not be gods. What does that ultimately say about ideals? We have this, say, like human mythology is replete with ideals, ideal humans. The one that I'm most familiar with is Jesus Christ, of course, where you're, you know kids are often taught to be like Jesus as they're growing up, Christians or Catholics or whatever. Another one is, of course, Muhammad in the Islamic world, and in India they have probably the most carefully worked out example of them all. They have the Ramayan, the epic of Lord Ram, Lord Rama. Um, where people are always encouraged to be as much as possible like Rama. Now that's an interesting thing in the face of Gnothi Se Oton. Know what you are and know what you are not. The very fact that you're comparing yourself to an ideal or a demigod or a god means that it's kind of an unfair competition or an unfair comparison rather because you're a flawed human being. Know thyself. Know that you have limits. Know that you're not a god. And then understand that when you're evaluating yourself. Can I be judged by divine standards? Can I ju be judged for not being a god? Can I be judged for not following in the steps of Jesus Christ? Can I be judged for not living up to Muhammad's ideals or how wonderfully Rama did his duty? Can I really legitimately be judged that way? No, I can't because it's, it's just not in my nature to be a god. <clears throat> Therefore, we can forget all ideals in terms of absolutely evaluating humans, because we only have ourselves to compare ourselves to. There's no ideal out there that we can actually say we're not living up to other than ourselves. So if we're going to judge ourselves, we have to judge ourselves fairly. We have to judge ourselves as humans and what are humans. Now, <clears throat> I said that self-knowledge might not actually be possible because the self, or whatever you want to call it, and you're talking about, as I say, compartments of the mind here, you're talking about levels of consciousness, you're talking about levels of um, psychological relationships, like what am I compared to the rest of the universe versus what am I compared to the guy walking down the street, um, what am I compared to some ideal versus what am I compared to what my neighbors can reasonably expect from me. I don't have to be perfect to to discharge my duties as a neighbor. I just got to keep my front lawn clean with my grass cut and I won't get a knock on the door from the city if my parent, my neighbors are anywhere near sane, which a couple of mine aren't, but welcome to the burbs, right? Um, and I don't even live in the rich burbs. I live in the poor burbs. <laughs> and it's uh, very suburban here. Now, so we judge ourselves and... I, or if we are to judge ourselves, we have to judge ourselves logically and rationally as humans, not against some sort of impossible ideal that we know that humans cannot in their nature live up to. Because the whole idea is to be rational about how we're judging ourselves. Can we know ourselves? Okay, well, what is it in the subject-object relationship? Know thyself. Know means you know yourself. You, yourself. You and yourself are posited as different things, are they? In a certain sense, they are, because there is that which perceives, and then there's that which has been altered by experience, of course. Said that, like working again from my metaphysics, I know I exist. The cogito tells me that I exist, that I exist. I know that I have experiences. I might not know if these experiences are accurate, but I know that I have them. I might not, I may be a brain in a vat right now, but I am experiencing talking into a webcam. I don't know if it's actually happening, but I know that the, my experience of it is real. Now, part of me is being formed by this tiny act of talking into a webcam. Part of what I am, or part of that which is somehow um, part of me, or part of the totality that is me, is being altered simply by the act of looking into and talking into the webcam. 
But what part is that? Is that the fundamental me? Is that the fundamental perspective of the first person of me looking into the webcam? Or is that which is being altered somehow different from that which is fundamentally me? We're dealing with psychology here, of course, and it, that gets really weird, but I'm trying to keep it simple, I suppose. If we're going to know ourselves, that which knows is not the same as that which is known, right? That's the first thing that I was talking about with bits of knowledge, bits of information. I know this information. I am not this information. Therefore, on this level, me and the information are two different things. So, in a sense, knowing yourself, you're turning yourself into, a, into information, right? Because you want to know yourself. You want to have knowledge of yourself. You want to have information about yourself. Therefore, on this level, you and yourself are two different things. Um, you've got to step out of yourself, as it were, to know yourself. Therefore, is self-knowledge actually possible? It gets really tautological and really convoluted here. But I think that it's a valid form of reasoning, because, or a valid thing to ponder, because we want to know what we are. We want to know what we are, and we have to know whether or not. And of course, since we're talking about value here, we're we're, we're going to we want to know what value we place on ourselves. So we have to step out of ourselves, evaluate ourselves, and say, what do we have to judge ourselves against? Ourselves. Okay. Am I myself? Yes. All right. How can I know that which is myself? Me and knowledge are two different things. Therefore, how can I know that which I am? Unless I'm talking about a, uh, myself on a certain level. The certain level is, of course, Andy, who is experiencing talking into the webcam, who remembers talking into the webcam, who lives a certain life, who um, looks a certain way, not, I don't have a beard in anymore, and I've let my hair grow out, and this sort of thing, although I could buzz it off again and let the beard and mustache grow out at any moment, and off you go to the races. Um, but really, the ultimate first-person viewer in all this doesn't change. It's still happening to something that I can identify as me, even though the aspects of me change completely. My son is a two-year-old, tear-assing around the house, driving his mother insane all day. Um, and um, in 20 years, he won't be a little two-year-old. He'll be a young man, I guess, assuming that he survives, but, you know. Um, <clears throat> so you have... Um, you have, he's the same person, but he's not the same thing. He, he was once a toddler, now he's an adult. Okay, but something is the same there. So we have two separate notions of identity here. There is that which perceives and that which, that which is, an aspect attached to that which perceives. That's, as I always say, that's my theory of karma. Um, that which is altered by experience is external to that which fundamentally is. Andy gets altered. Andy will wither and die one day. That which is, that which perceives everything, I don't know. I don't know what that is yet. I don't know what consciousness is. Um, so can I know that which is in the normal sense? Can I have knowledge of that which perceives? Well, if I have knowledge of that which perceives, then I'm not looking at it from the point of view, or I can't escape the point of view of that which perceives. To know something, you have to step back from it and look at it. Can the first-person perspective, can the I actually do that? That's a very tough question. Just as I was ending, my phone starts ringing.